guys going to the executive board next Monday? Um, I would. I'll probably go. Yeah. It's actually I, I get some Mondays off. A lot of people work for me. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So oh. I get that work early to take on those three days. So, so that's why it's always worked out that we meet on Tuesdays to Thursdays. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, yeah, I'm going to go to that one. Can you make it? Um, we will pretty quickly, I think. Um, it'll still be a few minutes, but... Um, you want me to leave? You want me to stay? No, you're welcome to stay. Okay. Um, so I'd like to call the meeting to order at 738. Um, are there any adjustments to the agenda? Yes. Yes. Okay. You go first. Oh, I, I just have some um, amendments to the minutes for March 6th, so. Is that what, this where I would mention that? Or no, when we get to the consent we agenda? Get to okay. Okay. And anything else? There was something. So, um, so was it? Let's see if we can change the name to White River Valley. Just want to discuss that. Okay. So do we want to put that under discussion items 5.4, um, White River Valley Union District, and then 5.5, .5, Shannon? Uh, two things I'd like to add. One is um, uh, consideration of a resolution on gun violence that's being considered by a number of school boards in Vermont. And I actually, um, I thought it might be printed out, but since we didn't get a printout, I did just email it to everyone. So if you have a device, you can access that. And then also a discussion of, um, of snow days and the significant impact they have on families in the area and are there some creative solutions we might be able to use for that. Move flower. <laughs> well <laughs> it will it didn't work. That'll ruin our enrollment. <laughs> <but. laughs> All right. Anything else? Any other additions to the agenda? Okay. All right. Um, that brings us to public comment. There is no public. All right. Um, consent agenda. The minutes of February 20th, 2018. They're in the packet. Um, these aren't the ones. Or did people have? This isn't the one that I wanted to. Okay. And then, but. All right. Um, sure. Mm -hmm. So we're going to approve the minutes. From February 20th. Okay. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? Okay. Um, Lisa, the amendments? Yeah, amendments to the meeting on March 6th. Um, Pam Brown sent me, Tammy Benoit sent me notes that I reviewed and okay. edited and then submitted. And then Pam Brown, for the Bethel Town Clerk, had also taken notes. And I found a couple of um, bits in her notes that would improve the notes from March 6th that I would like to add. One would be the name of somebody who seconded, and the second one was a little paragraph that gave a little more detail to a certain part of the presentation that I thought would be worthy. So um, I have those pieces highlighted in my computer bag in the other room. So um, I could go get them if that if people want to see what it is that, that I was actually wanting to add to the notes. Um, but can you email us the edi the edited copy and we'll yes. move this to our next meeting? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. On the I guess the second full paragraph, uh, is my last name spoke wrong. Okay. Where's this on the March sixth? <laughs> yeah. Because Lisa Floyd and Chris Riley provided updates on Trey Yeah. R E I L O Y? Yeah. Okay. Just want to make sure I'm getting it yeah. right. Oh, yeah. yeah. R E I L L Y. The E is before the I. <laughs> I before E, except after C, and the R in Riley. <laughs> hey, that, and that rhymes. That just throws all, everything I've ever known <laughs> right out the window. Yeah, it's the Irish. Okay. All right. That was it for that. Okay, because oh, no. you're going to provide us 
messed with the cup. All right. Um, so special education budget. We were. This got on the agenda because after the um, after the annual meeting, we ended up getting a lot of community questions and having questions um, ourselves about it. So I think Rodney, you suggested that it should be something that we discuss a little bit more. So I thought it was valuable for us to have Bruce here in order to explain. Sort of. Basically, I mean, we can't do really do anything about the budget. But there is a lot of people that question it and whatnot, and I guess we just want to try well, to cut corners wherever we can. And, and, and you know, we, everybody's cutting budgets, and uh, it is a it is a big chunk of it. Well, the, the funding comes from the Ed Fund. Uh, you know, I mean that's basically uh, where a large percentage of it comes from, and uh, um, they have some pretty strict gu guidelines of what they will pay for and what they won't pay for. Um, you, Some of you have never been in a situation where some of the special ed employees have been used to do things that aren't special ed duties and at the end of the year if that happens you get billed back for the bus duty and study hall coverage and things that aren't that way. So. Um, <coughs> I guess I, I need to know. I think there was some questions from the floor regarding the um, salary lines for that. I think they believe that uh, the special ed director was making a couple hundred thousand dollars, but really what was going on there is that there were several people that were covered under that number. Um, and I guess I need specifics on what you want to know. Uh, so, so the specific question that I was asked that I felt unprepared to answer was um, in the case of alternative placements if a student is not yet on an IEP and goes to an alternative placement they're not reimbursed and those can sometimes be extremely costly um, so we were asked what number of students are in alternative placements without a special education plan I can't answer you. I'd have to do some research. Okay. So you're saying that, that if, if we send a student out that doesn't have a special IEP, special education plan, then then the school is going to be paying for that? 100% of that, correct? Well, I mean, they're... The they district. Get, yeah, they get money from the Ed Fund. I mean, the, okay. the, how would it, the decision to send them out be made without an IEP? I mean, there can be a variety of factors. It just did their success, the way that they impact other students' education. If they are learning if they're in the throwing classroom. chairs and, and disrupting. Um, safety. You know, safety issues. Uh, so more behavioral. Well, I mean, it doesn't always have to be that way, but uh, kids that are on 504 sometimes, the 504 is a federal mandate for, uh, you know, work that we have to do with kids who let's say, uh, have a, uh, are, are not, don't meet special ed criteria, but we still have to work with them. Um, we have to provide accommodations for them. He, and that's what the federal law says. The law is kind of an unfunded mandate. There's no budget for it, but we have to do it anyway. And uh, there are guide, strict guidelines of, of how we have to uh, decide who who gets that help and who doesn't. Um, so I, I guess the, you know, that I would have Deb, Thur Deb uh, Matthews come and, and address with you with all of these things. We do have some kids uh, that are in our own uh, programming, uh, like this restorative class, I believe, that, that aren't necessarily covered by uh, IEPs. And uh, they're there because they need to be there. And they, they, you know, I mean, we started that program because there were significant kids that were really disrupting everyone, and uh, they needed to get some. Did you want me to talk at some point about that group that I meet with in Hartford with negotiations? Is this a good time to do that? Or to negotiations are next on our but on our agenda. Do you want me to pop in yeah. when? Yeah. Thanks, James. Uh, so I'd ask Deb to come and address you on that. She would be able to be very specific with you about funding uh, 
and uh, the, the need for placement and uh, probably the numbers of, of kids. If we are able, I know you are looking to expand the restorative classroom program here in the SU. Mm -hmm. If we were able to do that, would we be able to bring all of those students back or are some of them have such severe uh, difficulties no. that they can't come back from places like Brownsburg? No, it, one size doesn't fit all. I mean, and uh, we may be able to make some s significant impact and probably some significant savings. Um, but there's some obstacles, space, uh, making sure that we have the right people. Dr. Ketter has been very good to us. He likes this SU. He's been working with Kids in the Restorative Program, which is a model program. I mean, it's it's really hard to find placements for kids that are third grade down. Um, you know, usually they get AIDS and, and people put them with AIDS and they just, that's what they do. But the third therapeutic value of that, the proactive approach to that, the therapy part of it is not always being handled when you do that. It's just more or less somebody there to stop them from doing what they're going to do. But so we don't get into the... The aides aren't really trained to do that. No, the, they, the, they, the parents, they may right? be able when to stop them from kicking somebody, but it's not... Would it actually be used maybe like an interventionist or something like that. It might work so, better, but it costs more So Doctor, stop doing it. <laughs> Dr. Ketter's kind of taken them back and kind of reduced their world a little bit and tried to get the kids to uh, maybe relearn some things and uh, and it's a pretty controlled environment uh, and that's done that way deliberately to try to be able to do that mm -hmm. um, we are we've had some luck with sending some kids back out once they've been in there for a little while um, in the restorative yes okay. yes um, and in some cases it hasn't worked and we've brought them back and we've started with them. We, we also know that one of the mistakes that we've made is that some of the staff that they go back to integrate with in those classrooms need to be trained more than they are. Yeah. It's not only the kids, it's the staff to, to understand where the triggers are and to try to make, make sure that they know not to uh, go there and that, that the teachers know how to not set them off, I guess. Uh, so um, I, I'm very proud of that program, but I think it would be very helpful if we had an opportunity to maybe uh, take it up a couple grades uh, and, and maybe go up to eighth grade, but maybe only up to sixth grade. We, we originally created the program, which was a, a, a one through three grades. We've expanded it to fourth grade because some of the kids just weren't ready to leave. and. Uh, but there needs to be a, a, an, a, an assessment of our space. And I know that Deb asked the principals to please take a look at what they may have in the way of space as we rearrange our classes and, and everything. So right now, uh, Royalton has, uh, is housing the program, but they don't have any kids in the program. Which, you know, it's other SU schools that send them there. I mean, it's just the way it is right now. Doesn't mean they won't have one next week, but and they have had them in the past, but right now they don't. So, uh, and it's a great space. They're down in that basement section, the old, music the old yeah music uh, uh, room. So it, it's when I was in New Hampshire, I had two of these programs going on. One for the little guys and. Uh, uh, and it was th third through eighth, and then one for the high school kids, and they were always full, always full. And uh, uh, so. And being in Central Vermont, if we expanded, is there there may be revenue to be made oh, yeah. from other yeah. oh, SUs? Yeah. Oh yeah. We've had people place. knocking on the door and asking to put kids in now. I mean, but. Uh, we haven't gotten to the point we want to take care of our own kids first and we haven't gotten to the point where we open the doors but they're asking because you can't find programs okay. for these young, this young uh, a student so uh, and hopefully it actually gets them off their ID. well that's the point is to, 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 to get on just to save money but it is to 
make things better. That's that's to try to get them turned around and back in their classrooms uh, as soon as possible. I think I would like, and and I'm not going to ask you now, but I think one of the things that we have been interested in is maybe not putting putting them back necessarily in the school that they came from. Uh, these restorative kids I'm talking about that maybe a, a fresh start somewhere else might help them. Uh, but that takes some more of an SU discussion about them and it's also kind of a case by case basis. Why don't we merge so many districts? Is it possible to put them back in the same district? Let's say they came from Chelsea but you put them back in the coverage school system? Perhaps. If we're all working. Perhaps. I mean right now they're all elementary right. students. Or if they came from Royal Tank, give them a fresh start in Bethel, Bethel. if they needed yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Well, right. the parents have something to say that this. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's not just, it can't just unilaterally decide that that's what they're going to do, but yeah, we it would can be nice if that was an option. Yeah. It would yeah. be really nice if that was an option. But I'm thinking a little more radical than that. If they're from Chelsea, maybe they come back to Royalton, or if they're, or vice versa. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. Uh, we are going to have seven uh, uh, special needs buses that are going to be buzzing around the SU as a part of our new contract. Uh, there are going to be vans that should be available some part of the day. And I was thinking while we were making those presentations about the forest and moving kids around to, you know, be involved in that. And because transportation is always an issue. You know, if you don't have it, you always want it. And <laughs> so. Thank okay. you. Mm -hmm. you I'm sorry I didn't ask more specific questions. Well, that's okay. Answer them, but. Um, yeah. Just one other thing to potentially add to the agenda would be okay. an update on the principal search. Is that, okay. is that executive session personnel or? I don't think. Right. No, yeah. as long as we don't get into a lot of detail, okay. it's fine. Okay. If we talk um, about the individual candidates, then that's a different story. Okay. So. All right, so um, negotiation, negotiations and representation. I think a couple of people have attended negotiations meetings. We will need to have our own negotiations representation. And Rodney and I probably can't represent us. Um, Rodney, because Jamie teaches here, his wife, and me because it was mentioned that because of how fact-finding works, they look at the area contracts. So because I teach in a public school one district over, um, people are, there, there was concern expressed that it could be conflict of interest. So by getting teachers a really good deal here, if I did that, then I would in some ways potentially, if, if I were calculating enough, impact my own contract and livelihood thereby. Yeah, you're so, sitting over there just going, ah, I know. So I would rather not have anyone think that about me. Um, and I think that choosing from among the four of you would be the best way to go. Gio has some things to say uh, about stuff we should think about when we do this. So I'll go grab him for that. Me go? Um, sure, if you okay. want to. I think it's probably less likely that you'll trip over the board. So. Well, I don't know. <laughs> well, I don't know. I probably it's been a long time since that. I skipped road. <laughs> and I, I just wanted to say too, I, I read up on it a little bit, and, and basically you can talk about negotiation. I can talk, I can't talk about negotiations, I can listen to them. If you guys have information about what I've got, teachers raises, it's okay to talk. I can't, <clears throat> the only thing I can't do is try to influence your vote. Like I can't sit here and say, gee, I think teachers need a raise. You know, I, that's, that would be, you know. So that's why. I think we're in executive session discussing it. Right, and, but I can't discuss it. I, I can listen, but I can't and comment. Engage, yeah. mm -hmm. I just can't engage or try to persuade anybody to vote a certain way. And all of the negotiations have been happening and, in uh, open meetings, right? Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Speaking I, of which, how common is it around the state that these happen during the day? I mean, that's I, I would love to do this, but... Uh, having negotiations during the day, I did, especially on short notice, I can't take a whole day. Well, all the, and you didn't see this, but all the original early meetings were at night. Mm -hmm. and uh, But we've gotten into mediation, and getting a federal mediator to come at night from New York is just not going to work. So uh, 
And we had Ira O'Bell, uh, who was a mediator that did the first round of these, and he lives in Albany, so in New York as well. So, yeah, we're down to a point where you, it's true. You know, um, I, I feel guilty in asking board members to give up work for a day. They've always been pretty generous with their time, but I know that they're just as busy as anybody else. So um, it's not. I mean, for me, it's just I have to reschedule all these patients and move them mm -hmm. to different. I, I'm not going to ask them to do that. Yeah. No, I, I think normally in the normal part of negotiations, they're at night. They all, all of them have been, uh, but we're now into a pretty, pretty specialized place where we need help. And is that effective? Um, well, I've only been here four years, and, and uh, my second contract negotiations. Um, I, I think we settled uh, last time before we had to go to mediation, but it took a while, and it took some, uh, you know, kind of a full court press to get there, and. Uh, um, but I don't think we went to mediation or fact-finding last time. Uh, this is <coughs> mediation, fact-finding, and now another mediation is what it is. This, the federal mediator is a, a new, new round of that. I'm very hopeful. I, I, we had a very productive meeting the other night. We tried to hash out some of the disagreements around the table and get pretty much on the same page. but. You know, you're meeting a group that have other interests and, and value things other than us. So, you know, I mean, everybody wants the best for kids, but it's how do we get there? You know, how do we get to that place? So, I don't know what's going to happen next. I mean, after this one, I don't know. Um, so. And my understanding is it can be as many or as few, even none, from any board. Uh, there are some of the boards that don't send folks, uh, and there are some board members that, frankly, don't show up because they've got other things that are they've got to do. But we need to have a we like to have a quorum. Of that means uh, five members, five different board members from different boards, and we have had quorums lately uh, where everybody I think we had eight or nine the other night right? yeah, there, was, there was there was it was good representation and one of the interesting things about this is that you will just finish if if this gets settled on Thursday and then when do negotiations begin again <laughs> you're asking a question ask, asking a question you know the answer to I know it's right soon. Away. I don't well, know in the now case of today, support staff one year yeah, in the case of the support staff, we settled for a two year, so right. that next round probably won't begin until early winter. Yeah. Uh, so we have a, a little bit of a reprieve. I don't know what's going to happen with these guys. Yeah. And uh, that's one of the points of negotiation is whether it's going to be a one year, which means this year that we're currently in, or it's going to be two year or something else. So depending on the group that's negotiating, it's either uh, negotiating for one-year contracts or two-year contracts. If it's one year, then as soon as you wrap one up, you're getting ready to start with well, it. Or it could be a three-year contract. I mean, if anybody's willing to go that, that mm -hmm. place, I think they're pretty rare these days. Right. Because nobody knows what health insurance is doing and, and all that kind of thing. Literally. So we've, yeah. we've had a real, we've had a real, uh, you know, that. I don't see any long-term contracts. Although I did hear one that was a record. three or four year, not too long. And how often do these groups meet? Well, that's been a point of contention too. We wanted to meet a couple times a month. Uh, the union wanted to meet once a month. They didn't want to meet over the summer. I makes it sound like I'm whining, but uh, we are. You want to? You want to? <laughs> the question is how often do. They meet negotiations. Well, one of the tactics of the NEA is to lengthen the process, and it wears us down. So, so it, it, it works. We get wore down. Um, get, we're volunteers, and they're not. They, they get, in essence, they don't. They don't get paid for their time at the table, but they get paid because they make money. So, 
we, we have a, there's a regional, um, the VSBA is working with Joe Blanchett. Joe Blanchett used to be a negotiator for, it's, uh, uh, for the um, NEA. He has since left the NEA and now he's got his own practice and he's been working with boards educating us on how to be better negotiators and we're woefully inadequate. Um, so what he's done is he has a series of regional meetings that he does around the state. Um, and uh, superintendents and a, a board member go to these. It's, it's not an official position. It's not a committee of the board. Um, it has no ability to make any kind of decisions. So because it doesn't, it's, it doesn't have to comply with open meeting laws since we're not making decisions there. Um, so right now it's uh, Hartford, we meet in Hartford, they send a rep. Um, I've been going for us, White River. Um, we've seen <clears throat> folks from Orange East, uh, Washington Central, which is Woodstock area, um, uh, Windsor comes, uh, uh, who else am I thinking? So we just sit around the table and, and we just say, here's what's going on. And then Joe says, okay, you might think of this, this, and that. Or somebody else at the table might say, in my experience, you might try this. Uh, we make no shared decisions. We don't, because that's illegal. There's no like, okay, we're all gonna come out and advocate for the same thing. Um, but we do share our experiences. So um, I, being a short timer on the board, would love to slough this off on somebody else. You'll learn a ton. It's a great group. It's actually, I actually enjoy going. Um, and uh, so it's like a negotiator support group. Yes. <laughs> 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 yes. <laughs> That's a good way to word it. it and is it's a, just one person from the SU or one person from each board? I've been one. going, I, I was going to the one that meets in, around the Mount Pillar area. Well, Geo's going down there, but I couldn't keep up. Yeah, uh, you said too many meetings. I just had too many meetings. And, I couldn't go anywhere. In fact, I, I told Bruce that I didn't want him to come because he had too many meetings and he needs to knock something off his plate. So I think in the future, if things got lighter for him, this might be something he would come back to. Um, so one or two of us presumably could go. Well, they only want one. Only one. Joe, okay. Joe would like just one. And, and, and he wants the same person coming consistently. Uh, I haven't always been able to make it because there's sometimes actually, so there was dates we were actually negotiating yeah, when they did this. Oh. Um, so there's a, uh, and, and it's, it's probably bi-monthly it's been meeting. Some, I don't think we've met now in, in probably three months because everybody's settled but us now. Um, so they're all getting ready for their next round of negotiations. And Sorry, we're did still, I roll my eyes out loud? <laughs> <laughs> and we're still at it. So um, it's, it's, it's extremely valuable. So this, this, this is the kind of insight that I take back to the, the team mm -hmm. and say, this is what I'm hearing from other boards. And where would you bring it back to the team? In what format? You don't, this is where you could just share in an email uh, what you've gotten from the I usually just group. share it. I just come back and say verbally what's, okay. what's okay. going on. I don't, I don't put together a report or anything. Gio, before you came in, Andrew asked the question, and I don't have a, a long enough history back to be, you probably do, but I don't, about previous negotiations. Is this going the longest? The farthest. I said last time we didn't get to mediation or fact finding. We were able to settle before there. Do you know the history of this? Well, it's 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 changed. It's it's a pretty tough history to explain because it's kind of comparing apples to oranges. So in Bethel, they've always had uh, they've had a history for a while of fairly contentious negotiations, um, and and it's not. I think they've gone to fact finding and mediation in recent years. You're uh, saying in Royalton or Bethel? No, Bethel. Bethel. Okay. Bethel. Uh, Royalton was quite different. We, we actually did a collaborative negotiations for the first, I want to say, um, two contracts I did with the teachers. It was yeah, just- Yeah, John was talking to me about that. Yeah, we just, just, we just sat around and just say, Man, what do you think? And, and, and reach quick settlements. The, the nature of the association in Royalton has changed. They uh, don't play that way anymore. And so we don't play that way anymore. Um, the not last time we were, so a, couple, a bunch of years ago we brought the, um, all five towns in the old uh, Orange Windsor had separate contracts. And we brought all five into 
sort of one contract. It's only sort of one. We didn't quite there unify some, it. Some outliers even yeah. in that contract. Yeah, so we got close, and that took us <laughs> two and a half years. And, and really, the only way now we started collaboratively, um, but the association members in the room um, weren't being collaborative. They were, <laughs> behind the scenes, they were being coached and trained. Uh, instead of we, everybody was supposed to come in the room and just say what they thought and kind of reach a nice, you know. Let's let's do this. But they they actually came in with positions. <laughs> it only became apparent till later in the process what was going on. And at, at that point, it was kind of interesting. Bruce, uh, Don Shaw, and I finished uh, an unrehearsed walkout <laughs> on, on the like the next to the last meeting. That was the last meeting scheduled. <laughs> and we, I, because I knew if I said, you know, this is this is pointless. We're not getting it. That they would have said, no, no, just, just stay. We'll keep talking. And this still would have gotten nowhere. So I thought, we need to let them know that we're I'm done. A bit, a bit of it. So we got up and left. And and <laughs> they called us back up, basically, and said, let's meet again. And then they basically gave us what our last offer was. They said, fine, we agree with it. So it's, it's getting more contentious. And so the last time around, we didn't even go in. This, this is the first time we went in and hired a lawyer. We don't even negotiate. We just have the lawyer negotiate. So the lawyer does our speaking for us because um, it's it's reached a point where it's it's just um, that that seems to be the best best method. Well, and you can make the point that it costs a lot for a lawyer, but there's also a lot at stake. You know, the health insurance and the and the, all the other things that go into a contract is big money. And she, she is quite helpful. <laughs> so she, she coaches us a lot. Oh, and so that's a meeting I sat in on, and she was the one that we were talking to via... Dina. That's okay. Dina. <laughs> well, you're not just negotiating with the teachers that you know anymore. It's SUY. So. It's not just SUY. It's NEA. It's statewide. There's a statewide strategy. Boards can't develop a statewide strategy. It's against the law. NEA has no, there's no qualm about developing, and they are currently developing their new statewide strategy because most towns have settled and they're getting ready to roll again. So it's, we're, it's, it's, a, it's and uh, when I started, I think Vermont was 28th in pay, 29th in pay in the U.S., and I think we're up in, like, I think we're at number 20 and rising like a meteor. Because the NEA in and the that's state. That's goal is to like advance. Right. The NEA in the state is really good. They're very good. They're very well. They're not anti union. The whole stuff that happened in West Virginia, I was totally for those West Virginia teachers. No pay raise in three or four years, getting, you know, okay. just asking for a 5%. <laughs> starting salaries are coming in, I think, at the uh, high 20s. Right. I mean, they're, that's terrible. That's ridiculous. Yeah, they needed to go on strike. Uh, and, and I'm not anti-union, it's just, it's, it's, there's a point where we need to, enough's enough. Our pay scales, um, the way we do the, a grid system, it's, it, this, it just goes out of sight. And, and we're going to get, if we keep on our course, we're going to get hammered. Um, so we need to put the brakes somewhere. So that's, that's, that's it in a nutshell. So if you guys want to send somebody, I'm happy. What I told uh, Joe is I'd be, I'd, I'd like to bring a new person down, introduce them to the group. And then I'm done, <laughs> and then they can go. So, like I said, it's fun. Joe's inter Joe's entertaining. I don't know oh, if he's got a, he's a, got a, all kinds of knowledge. Yeah, and he's he's actually fun to listen to. So it's not like it's it's a drone on session. How long do the meetings usually last? Uh, two hours. Very strict. Start at six. We have a little sandwich. Goes to eight. Done. Does not go beyond eight o'clock ever. So. And how is this covered? How is this time paid for? Uh, he. Um, VSBA? No, VSBA doesn't actually pay him. Um, uh, I, I'm not quite sure, certain of, of I don't know how he gets paid. I know he doesn't get paid by the VSBA. I want to. I want to say he probably somehow gets paid by VHOP or something. I don't. I don't. But I don't. I, I, I don't. Don't quote me on that because I don't know. But not paid by. No, we don't. Pay. Not paid by us. No. We, if we hired him as a district to help us with negotiations, we would pay him. Because mm -hmm. that's the kind of stuff he would do for us. If we wanted to hire him, we would definitely yeah. be hired. All right. So if you pick somebody, if you don't pick somebody, let me know. When's the next meeting? And location. Yeah, always in Hartford, always at the uh, superintendent's office in Hartford. In 
White River Junction next to the school there. So anybody interested or in either of these opportunities? Okay. And if if one if we have an appointed person and that person can't make it to one, can we have a backup? Is that acceptable? They, or just they, they just want to see the same face each time? They yeah, he said Joe doesn't like backups. Okay. So I've never sent a backup. So it's what day go or you can't. Is it? Was I can't find the date for the next one. So, so you'll send an email. When I find out, mm -hmm. I'll let you know, Shannon. Okay. Great. Thank Anyone you. else? In Lisa, were you interested? Um, Don't no. vote on this. Do not <laughs> vote on this. This is not an official board position. Okay. It's just one of you just, just so it says here. I'll go. Okay. Yeah. But don't don't vote on it. Um, and and in fact, when we communicate, this group communicates to each other. We use our personal emails, and this is completely legal. Because mm -hmm. this is um, this is we can't. We're not a decision-making body. We can't make a decision as long as we keep those emails in our circle. We don't have a quorum of any board or body. So so you just need to do it like a nod of heads. And, and, and ask somebody way, to go. If any of you want to join in with us on Thursday, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, Come I'd ahead. love to, but I can't. Well, no, I understand you got to work, but you know, if yeah. we get if we have enough notice, I just hope this is over. But yeah, yeah there's a lot of, a of weeks there's notice, all I kinds of just it. sitting around. There you know, is just sitting around, there is. waiting, and and the mediator <laughs> jumps around all over the place. They'll be in one room, we'll be in another, and you but go back. I, I got some hope that we'll. We'll bust through. Yeah, I think so. I, I hope so. 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 I'd be optimistic. Well, All right, so are you at Shannon then with the nod of the heads here? Sure. Right. I'll get a hold of you once I find out. Okay. Thanks, guys. I think you'd be awesome. All right. um, I'm here for three years, too, so there's continuity. I'm going to be going into the next negotiations, or I'll be around. No confidence. No confidence that the rest of us will be re elected. So. Should we hold off on selecting negotiators in good faith that things are going to be settled Thursday, or should we select a couple just to ward off? I, I don't evil know. Spirits? You got a coin we can flip? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't have any idea what, what's well, going to happen. Is anybody Good interested point. in negotiating? So it's Thursday. What's the time? time? Nine it starts five. at nine o'clock, and it'll probably end at five. Um, that's I'm just, not sure. If we're, yeah, really, okay. if we're really close, it could go a little longer than that, or maybe if we don't get anywhere, it could be a lot shorter. Than that. I'm no. slaughtering no. ducks on Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll probably be more fun. All right, maybe we should hold <laughs> off and wait, yeah. wait well, for um, the next well, you round. Should spend yeah. your morning doing that, and so then you come in just, just get covered. covered. Come like that. Feathers yeah, come like that. That'll it's set terrifying. the mood. Maybe that'll set the mood for the day. <laughs> all right. Slap a duck on Is that all for negotiations? Thank you. <clears throat> I'm grateful that Gio did that. Yeah. Um, all right. So we have this document next on the agenda. It's our Steve Dale agreement. So it basically says that he will help to make our transition as smooth as possible. Um, and give us feedback on perhaps what the next steps should be. Um, and then also, um, so um, those are the sorts of things that'll help. For example, um, seeing the potential for some restructuring of the full board, those sorts of things. He can to look at the big picture and then say, perhaps you guys should be looking in this direction to sort of help us protect and our And this interests. would be opportunities for us to meet with him outside mm -hmm. of our regularly appointed board meetings. Or he could come to our board meetings. Mm -hmm. um, either way. So um, this is just here for us to look at. Um, I think it's a pretty good idea because... Oh, absolutely. And I think it's reasonable um, in terms of price. So and this is part of the ten thousand dollars that you've got in the budget. This is this outside. would be Bethel and Royalton money. That oh. money's not available till July first. Okay. So. <clears throat> this money's not available until and July first. And that is no. This money would come out of your budgets okay. now. But the money I'm talking about 
will be available to the whole SU. So we have to look at it as uh, all the board members. Well, wouldn't the other board need to approve money <coughs> this year? Um, yes, we can. Well, yeah, we can spend you know, money. basically, I've been asked by them, where the where is the money coming to pay committees? I said, well, the new board doesn't have any money. <laughs> you know, it's kind of that was a couple of the Royalton board members asked me that, and I said, no, it. You know, we've. But we've set aside some money. We've, we're going to split it, and um, right. But know, I mean, like if, it's if somebody the same kind of thing. thing it's uh, uh, right. If money is being paid to Steve prior to the first of July, it's coming out of current budgets. Correct. And correct. So is it up to? Do we, we have? You should probably to ask them. I guess uh, since it's going to come right. out of their. Budget. But there are board budget lines. Yeah. That would cover this. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So what exactly will you we need be using me, for? you guys? Yeah. Are you done? Um, to wow. make sure that we're not missing any deadlines, that Just we're, we're attending to all the details that we need to attend to. Um, I just think it's pretty important. And what will happen to the board funds in those budgets at the end of the year? The surplus. Right. Or. Or deficit. Surplus or deficit, though, yeah. 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 we're going to inherit that right. either come July 1st, yeah, either if, way. Yeah, so it'll right. be something you'll have to repay or enjoy a surplus. I think this is a really nice way, personally, for us to be proactive and to be on top of who we are as board members and how we function as a team and making sure that we're aware of all the moving parts as opposed to having a lot of oopses that happen along the way and then trying to recover. And I think with, with Steve on board, we can be asking those questions and he might even preempt it or prompt us with suggestions that we wouldn't have even thought about, but having had that information, we'll be um, more informed and, and more together. I guess I'd just like to hear more specifically what those types of things really, you know, if we're gonna spend $2,000. <laughs> well, that's the trouble, we don't know, he has to tell us. <laughs> right, but like, uh, you know. Well, just learning about the negotiations support group and then going to those negotiation, you know, to listen to the negotiations that are happening. Is that all of Steve Dale? Would he would explain all that. Support. Those are things that we could ask him about systems, about different processes that happen as school board members. Am I right, Lisa? He was, yes. He so. was the chair, he was the executive director of the school boards association. So he trained boards, basically, is what he did. I mean, um, and you know, he's out with boards and trying to look at the work that you guys have to do and make it efficient. Um, I'd like him to work with us all on policy governance. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure whether all the boards will be receptive to that. Uh, some of them micromanage a little more than others, but I'd like to try for that. He's got a wealth of experience in working with boards, and I think I can say that I think the fact that we were able to pull this merger off, you know, has a lot to do with him. Yeah, and, and I would a lot to do with him. I would imagine if we've got four opportunities for meetings with him, the first one would be us asking him questions and planning out <clears throat> what we could cover in the next three meetings. I think so Lisa's we, intent was to try to get, make sure we don't drop anything, that mm -hmm. we do the things we need to do between now and and the end of the, the year. Oh, we, like contracts. Yeah, uh, you know, he can help us set up policies and things like that. Right. I assume. Yep. I, I hope um, to get a better scan, scope in with the policies so that everybody's working on the same things. But, <laughs> My sense was that there are certain legal things that have to happen in terms of wrapping up the old boards and launching us as cleanly as possible. Um, and that's what I really wanted his advice for um, because he's seen this process play out in other places um, and knows the things that have to be done and have to be tended to. Um, I think that Bruce has a good grasp on that as well, but also with so many districts going through the same process, I think that it seems like it can be an overwhelming task. And so, um, so that's why I just thought that this was a reasonable step. Well, I've, I've been on a number of boards 
and I'm actually on one right now that's having some major issues and I just feel like it is so good to be cohesive and working together and understanding you know policy governance just how we're going to work together and making sure we're aware of all the moving parts because when you get into a train wreck it's just hard to hard to manage it after that and it takes a lot of extra time so this will be a time saver and a money saver i think it's an insurance policy so i'm for it so i'm going to stop talking <laughs> do we need to vote on this We, we could vote on it, and then we could decide to get the blessing from the current board. If you get time, Bruce, we have some questions that we'd like to ask you. Yeah, it's a contract, so you probably, it's a legal document. So you but probably but it's between us and Steve. Yeah, our and, board. and, and, and yeah, you, know, you just don't know where your resources are coming from. That's the But issue. you're telling us that the resources are there. I believe they are, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I believe they are. Okay. I don't know where what I'm going to get into here. So. But it sounds like we would have to at least let the old board know what we're wanting to do. Well, I know that Dave knows what we want to do. I've mm -hmm. been communicating with him throughout, um, and I believe that Christine also, because I asked. I mean, I don't. The boards haven't voted. Well, I don't mean to right. represent that in any way. I think that all three of us, we had a meeting. Um, Eunice was there at the office and Steve Dale came down. So they wanted to get us together as chairs so we could look at the scope of what each board should be doing so that we're not stepping on each other's toes, duplicating work, et cetera. Um, and so this was one of the things that we thought was a reasonable idea. Um, at Should that point, there wasn't a contract, but they agreed with the idea that bringing um, somebody on board to make it so that it's smooth and so that balls don't get dropped. There have been some times when things have not gone as smoothly as possible, um, and I receive a message in the middle of the day and I'm floundering to catch up for the rest of the day. Um, mm -hmm. And to the degree possible, I'd like for that to not happen because what starts to scare me is what have I missed that I don't even know is an issue? Mm -hmm. Or what are we missing that we don't even know is an issue? And I just think the scope of all of the transitions in the whole district, so all 11 communities, makes it daunting for our SU. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's, that's my fear is that we miss something that I don't even have on my radar right now. To me, this isn't coming out of the, I mean, it's it's a Royalton budget and a Bethel budget mm -hmm. right now, and so it's spending money that, you know, um, technically we don't have yet, but it's difficult because which board are we going to ask for permission? Well, I think we need to bring yeah. it up at the three board meeting when we're all together, <coughs> because it does involve shutting them down. It doesn't really matter where the budget it comes from, though. Like it, it, it is all, gonna, all yeah. It's all going to end up yeah. in our, that's my you know, final but point, it's all going to end up in our laps July 1st. But, right. And, but I just think we should do it with the whole board because yeah. it does involve them because it's going to be part of their process of, of, why don't we, uh, of closing out their boards. Make sure there's an agenda item for them. April 9th, is that going to be okay. soon enough? We I know. Do we want to let him know sooner? I, I think ideally we wanted to let him know, but um, we can just say we're going to bring it up at the next okay. April 9th. Uh, we'll uh, tell him. I mean, do we want to? If the other boards have already said they're for it, uh, yeah. If, we don't really need him until June. If the board leadership is, has has no, we need him. We need him prior to June because yeah. he's looking out for our interests and trying to help us navigate. So the whole issue about the supervisory union full board yeah. right. wasn't an issue even on my radar until he brought it up at that meeting of the three of us and said to Christine and Dave, have you guys been looking out for them in this way? At which point, you know, I wrote a letter and went to that meeting that night and said, this is something we need to be thinking about before the board is reorganized because otherwise um, these very small towns will have three representatives 
and we as the largest school in the district, system in the district, will be on equal footing, what's the incentive to reorganize for them at that point? So it needs to be handled ahead of time. That, that was something soon, yeah. that wasn't on my radar until we had that conversation. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll make a motion that we, uh, that we accept this contract uh, or, or enter this agreement with Speedvale. If you just invoiced us in July. <laughs> you know, um, I'll second the motion. Okay. Any discussion after? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. I guess I'm not supposed to vote in case we unless it's a tie. Um, all right. Um, so I should we should still bring it to the attention of the two other boards. Mm -hmm. Um, thank you, April. I, to be fair, they brought that very large uh, uh, field trip to the attention of the boards tonight, and it's already gone out to the parents. So, so. yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll just ask forgiveness and not permission. Mm -hmm. Right. There you go. Okay. Um, up next, White River Valley Union District. I'd say River Valley School District. School District, okay. Change to from the White River Union District to the White River Valley School District. Yeah, yes. so that, you know, we're the White River Valley School. Yeah. So let's just be the White River Valley School District. So it's yeah. not confusing for people. Yeah. Right. And so can we go to the state board and ask for that change? So it's White River Valley? Mm -hmm. So, so it'd be WRVSD instead of WRUD. Yeah. I like that better. Yeah. yeah. There's something very Feels ugly like and funky about WR. Feels like we're stuck in a rut. Yeah. 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 Feels like just, mud. It's just making it <laughs> no. Right. So it would add consistency. Yeah. So how, where do we go for that? I mean, where are we going to have to move it to Bruce. Bruce. So I'd make a motion that, or I'd see a motion that we... Um, a motion to rename our district the White River Valley School District. Second. I second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Um, so, in your email, if you have a device, um, there is. It's going to take quite a bit a of resolution editing because um, it's created for the Essex School District. So I would propose, because it's starting to get late, that um, that I go ahead and edit it and table it for next meeting, but I will send it out or hopefully attach it to the agenda so everyone can review it before the meeting. Mm -hmm. It's also being uh, reviewed by the South Warrington current board at this time. And perhaps the board. Okay, so you're gonna... Um, I'll edit it so that it would reflect our districts. Um, oh, as opposed to the West Bridge yeah. School. So prior to and present it at the next board. The next board. Okay, so that'll be for April. Okay. All right. Um, snow days and creative solutions. So um, we've had a number of snow days in South Royalton. Um, this year and one of the things that's been brought to my attention and I certainly I have a nine-year-old so I certainly get this too is that um, number one there's no age limit on leaving your children home legally in the state of Vermont right and so, I'm meaning there's no minimum there's no minimum technically when you're supposed to leave them in a safe environment so my concern is sort of twofold one we have a number of families in the district, mine being one of them, where both parents work. And when you have so many snow days, we're putting parents in a position that, you know, want, and the flu has been particularly gruesome this year. Um, so we have a number of parents who, one parent has taken off work and another and traded back and forth, but you're running out of work days and you're running into um, being in trouble at work. So there's there's the potential that a number of students are being left at home by themselves, unsupervised, in that you know seven, eight, nine age category that's sort of concerning. Also, we also know that there are a number of students where the only hot meal they get is when they come to school. 
And so one of the um, solutions that I've seen that I would like to just think about if it's possible doing here, um, in the Windsor school system, they have a drop-in center. So they open the gymnasium for the day, and we could do this on one campus or both campuses. Um, and they have a few staff people, not necessarily everyday school staff, but they have people who come in who promise to be there regardless of weather. So if you call a snow day, maybe they can walk, maybe they have a super duper four wheel drive, but they're going to be there all day supervising so that students sort of, you know, we run pre-K, so pre-K through six or pre-K through middle school, I don't know what the upper limit is, but you could drop them in um, there would be the opportunity to get lunch, show movies, you just keep them, do activities all day. Um, you, we have to pay some staff sort of minimally, but it would um, be a safe place where you could drop your kids off. I think it would be a huge relief to a lot of families in the area. And if we had the staffing, we could even think about opening it up to the surrounding towns and it makes us more of a more attractive community-centered, family-centered, kid-friendly, you know, safety-oriented community in there. So it's an idea that has worked in other places, and I, I just would really like to explore it here. And where did you say it's actually working? Um, in Windsor. Do we need to vote on whether we think it's a good idea to explore it? Well, why don't we ask? the administration to give us some kind of cost estimate for what it would be. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. And we have to figure out any different ideas for the staff. Mm -hmm. And like how would you get the school budget or whatever. So, so ask the administration to look into this and flesh it out for us yeah. then? Would that be the right? And so we might want to wait to have them do it like over the summer or something like that because right now they kind of are but right. I think it's I just it, it's I think it's good. Mm -hmm. And even if it didn't happen this year, it is an idea that I would like to see implemented as moving forward because it is mm -hmm. it's it's a real burden on a lot of families. I would imagine I happen to know it's a real burden on his family because <laughs> I <laughs> I see the texts from his wife trying to find the child care. The, I would imagine it could be a stipended position as well. So because it is in addition to your Right. regular teaching duties so if there were a stipend that were offered mm -hmm. and teachers are getting salaried so they're they're not necessarily losing it and I, I don't know that it has to be teachers or teaching staff just even um, retired community members or well, and if as long as they're back but around you want people no, no, to volunteer day, to come in right. it would be an extra day for teachers because they make up snow days already Right, and they right. still have to make so it up the day at the and end of the year. And the other thing is uh, safety so concerns when you start telling people they have to travel in a two feet of snow. They don't have to. This right. would be yeah, a... No, but you... Yeah. You'd set up with all those... I guess it would be volunteers. It would be people who are saying, I am going to be there to... to you know, the adults are, are saying, I'm making that commitment. Just like many of us have jobs where we have a commitment. If it's snowing, I live in... Like you said, if I didn't want to drive in the snow, I'd live in Florida. Right. I have a job where I go every time it snows, and I get that, and that's something that I'm okay with, but it's my kids that I'm worried about. Right, so that's why I think we should offer, we should explore offering a pay, stipend. Yeah. Right. Pay something per hour. Perhaps similar to what, what gets, there's a per diem rate for most teachers for summer work time. Um, so if you offered your per diem summer rate, to people who are willing to do that because I think it it should be staff that's already been vetted by the school that's had a criminal records check that's right. had fingerprints um, that we can ensure is like a safe person to have there. So there's staffing ratio that really has to be maintained for something like that? But the, I mean, do we, in terms of number of people to the number, number of adults per kids. I think that should be part of the exploration. Yeah. Um, like and I think if Windsor's already doing this, we've got a model or two to look at. And I'm also thinking the parents, if they can, would be particularly interested because they don't get paid on snow days. Right. Um, and so they're waiting for that pay in June uh, because they only get paid the hours they work. So or taking their vacation days. Yeah. So that's, that's yeah. a challenge. Okay. So we all agree that should 
be explored. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of yelling happening next door. What? Are they just, is it loud? Or maybe it's just reasonable. Not. Okay, I kind of want to. I think it just echoes in the hallway. All right. Yeah. <laughs> We're just going to say that they're not arguing. <laughs> All right, great. Um, so, principal search. Um, our. Our, um, we were not able to make an elementary hire, so we know that. Um, we, I'm not sure if we're, I suspect we're gonna reopen that because we interviewed our top candidates. Um, so I would imagine that we're gonna start looking again. So did you guys interview a third person after the? There were we two other interviewed, candidates too. We interviewed, um, Five. But right um, on the day that we were doing the inner the meeting the top two candidates, right. there was one that came through by email for us to look at with a resume, like a late entry. But there was also one that you were interviewing at the school on the same day. Right. So for various reasons, um, we had the, the two that we thought were best qualified. Mm -hmm. um, to, to, uh, right. Okay. Um, so I and we've reopened the high school search. Just did you hear back from like the person who declined? Was um, it just the money, or was it? I think there were some other factors that play in that are out of our control. Mm -hmm. um, so those are both reopened searches. That's too bad. I was sad. Me too. <laughs> it was it was not what I wanted to hear. Um, all right, and so we are now scheduled to have an executive session around... Oh, public comment first. Public comment. Any public comment? <laughs> <laughs> all right, and now um, I, I let me see if Bruce is available, um, because I... I'm not sure. No, I mean, okay. to move the next meeting day tonight. Oh, did he ask? Yep, me? next meeting day, April 9th. Um, what time should we set our meeting for? Um, so the attempt of moving it to seven, the agenda looked brief. Um, that was guidance from Bruce because the, I don't know how the Royalton board members have been expressing that they feel, but a couple of the Bethel board members really said they wanted to be able to attend our meetings. So I attempted to yeah. move our meeting to seven so that hopefully their very short agendas would be over and then we could have our meeting. I think that's good. I think okay, seven. 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 I don't want to do it I, I was confused as, and, and maybe this is just me, why we had the updates from the committees mm -hmm. during that meeting, and then we just get into the weeds yep. um, with so many people. So if that hadn't happened and that had happened in here, then we would have um, been I, I also think that if there's going to be um, updates or presentations that are going to be longer than five minutes or so that they should be added to the agenda because we can't adequately plan mm -hmm. um, and I wonder if those that presented really realize that there's time constraints right probably not right I mean they're out of here when they're out of here and I loved both presentations mm -hmm. but it's a matter of you know we we have sort of marathon meetings planned. Right now. Okay. Yep. 